What's going on dudes and units? It is Deadbolt here, bringing back another SCP reaction. And today we got a request from Alpha Shocker to do SCP-899, The Lost Children. And this is a mind-affecting SCP, which the last mind-affecting SCP we did was one that made you want to watch weird porn. So yeah, but this one by the thumbnails, this one looks a lot scarier. So yeah, let's get into it. This is my Logan, by the way. Like, subscribe. You know, you already know. You know what to do. All right. Good See, after. this is what I'm talking about. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-899. Object class: Euclid. It's Formerly Euclid. Safe. See oh. Reports. Ooh. Okay. I'm curious about that. Special containment procedures. SCP-899 is contained in a rough patch of forest in Rocky Mountain National Park. The SCP-899 oh, phenomena has not been able to travel more than five meters beyond a standing living tree. Thus, the area has been isolated by creating a continuous fire break around the affected region. Three park service cabins are staffed by Foundation agents on the borders of the site for the purposes of preventing hikers and travelers from attempting to enter SCP-899. Agents are authorized to administer Class B and C amnestics to any trespassers. Children who enter SCP-899 cannot be recovered, and containment must be maintained by removing those who have knowledge of the child's last whereabouts, or by planting false evidence of death by natural causes elsewhere in the region. Oof. Agents who come into physical contact oh no. with SCP-899 must undergo regular psychiatric evaluation. As the SCP-899 phenomena has become increasingly more violent, all trees within five meters of observation cabins have been removed. Personnel entering SCP-899 must do so in pairs and carry sidearms with custom iron ammunition. Description SCP-899 is a psychic and telekinetic phenomenon that most commonly manifests as groups of hostile phantom children. Travelers in the area have reported being pursued and harassed by small shadowy figures. This thing, this pain poster thingy keeps moving and tapping. I think it's because of my fan. But yeah, you gotta stop that. That's scaring me. Hold on, let me find some tape or something. Cause that's creeping me out. <laughs> All right, duct tape. It's a little OP, but it'll work for now. I'll take it off later and put something else, probably like a thumbtack or something. But I'm not gonna watch this creepy video with a creepy girl in it. Not oh, crap. Where did I put my knife? Oh, here it is. With this creepy girl in it, and have you making all that noise? <laughs> There. Much better. <laughs> nice and quiet. And also, so, it's a phantom. Phantom children. So I'm guessing that's why you can't, like, once a child walks in there, it's it's game over. Because they're probably transformed into whatever this is. <laughs> that All right. And throw rocks in an attempt to drive them out of the immediate area. The figures tend to be featureless and it is usually difficult to determine if they possess any gender or even individual voices and behaviors. Oh, the so they're like copies. The area will result in an increase of aggressive behavior culminating in a direct physical attack by the entities. An adult who comes into physical contact with one of the entities will suffer the loss of all detailed memories prior to the onset of puberty. Just what? The knowledge of family members and living conditions will remain. But persons who have been affected by this memory loss often display a significant change in personality. The most what common the symptoms heck? are loss of impulsiveness and curiosity, and negative responses to attempts at humor. This kind of reminds me of the SCP painting of a clown. And like, if you say anything negative about it, it has like similar effects. I don't know if you guys have heard of that one, but man. Things like that, like just 
it touches you and now your life is boring. Right. That that really sucks. And also you don't remember anything before you started going through puberty. <laughs> that really sucks. Affected persons also tend to become highly impatient with children regardless of their prior behavior. Hmm. The adolescent children who come into contact with the entities will physically disappear. Oh shit. Which, some or all of the entities may take on parts of the lost children's appearance. No attempt to communicate or find the whereabouts of a child lost in this way have been successful. Adolescents who have not fully matured past puberty are... Uh. No more detailed manifestations have been encountered within the area. No attempts to communicate with the entities within SCP-899 have resulted in anything but attacks on Foundation personnel. Items made of iron or are useful in warding off direct contact with the entities. However, as confrontation of the phenomenon is not required to contain it, no tools containing have been allocated to SCP-899. Travel through the area is also hindered by a spatial anomaly that makes land navigation difficult. Compasses and GPS navigation systems will give false directions and trails through the underbush will change course. Although there are occasional sounds of wildlife within the affected area, no wild animals or tracks have been observed within the range of SCP-899's effect. Animals brought into the site are also subject to attacks by the entities, although they will not attempt to make physical contact. What? So animals are kind of immune, but they will not attempt to make physical contact. I wonder what happens to them. Considering this is the SCP Foundation, I'm surprised they haven't done any tests to see if they have any personality changes, just like humans or anything. Experiment 899. Oh, okay, here's the experiments. Conducted March 23rd to May 15th, 2009, SCP-573 was transferred to SCP-899 to test its effect on the childlike manifestations. SCP-573 is successful in driving away the manifestation. Wait. Let me look up SCP-573 real quick. SCP-573. SCP-573 is a flute made from bone, DNA, and carbon testing reveals the material to be human, female, and approximately a thousand years old. Okay. So it's a bone flute. And it's Euclid. And then when played, it places animals and prepubescent children into a highly receptive state. All creatures so affected are eager and willing to do whatever the player requests. Okay. It's a mind controlling bone flute. And what did they do? Experiment 899. It was transferred to, to test its effect on the childlike man. Okay. Although the spatial anomaly that complicates land travel within the area remained. Due to the harmful effects of prolonged exposure, SCP-573 was returned to containment at the conclusion of the experiment. SCP-573 should be contained here with SCP-899 as they can effectively be used to cancel each other out. There are no children or animals to be exposed to SCP-573 inside this place. Please reconsider and return 573 to my care. Mm -hmm. That's That makes sense. Incident Report 899-25 June 10th, 2009. A new manifestation has been encountered in SCP-899. The entity took the appearance of an adolescent male covered in bloody wounds. Rather than the normal interaction, it immediately attacked Dr. Resulting oh. in severe lacerations and distinct bite marks on the arm, neck, and upper thigh. Uh-oh. Dr. is undergoing treatment and quarantine. Well, he's not going to be a doctor anymore, I can tell you that. Incident Report 899-26. On June 13th, 2009, Dr. is released from quarantine with no permanent damage beyond scarring. Dr. passed a psychiatric examination 
with expected results and has been able to give detailed recollections from his youth despite contact with SCP-899. Hmm. The new manifestation has been classified 899-1. So it there's different types of things that can manifest there. 27 June 20th, 2009. SCP-899-1 manifestations have been increasing in number and have been observed in direct conflict with other manifestations of SCP-899. SCP-899-1 has also attacked the cabin on the northern border and started a fire, which resulted in the death of Agent Although SCP-899-1 can be deterred in the same manner as SCP-899, the new manifestations display a significant increase in aggression with intent to kill. Research suggests that the change in SCP-899's phenomena is related to exposure to SCP-573. Hmm. No further cross-SCP experimentation with SCP-899 is allowed at this time per O5 order. Damn, that sucks. Like, they had something good with SCP-573, you know, being able to kind of calm them down, you know? But then all of a sudden they create a new SCP that is immune to that and also wants to kill them. That... That kind of sucks. Okay. I'm glad I only have to teach you guys about this one. Anyway, that about does it for today. Thank you all for listening, if indeed you still are. And you are all dismissed. Goodbye. Alright. That was interesting. At least it wasn't, a, you know, this mind affecting SCP wasn't freaking about porn. <laughs> but yeah. Huh. That's, I like when they uh, test SCPs against other SCPs to see their effectiveness. And like, not just fighting, but like in this case, you know, it was the flute that it controls, you know? You know, and, the, and so it's a wave that's around the trees that creates these SCPs. Okay. All right. But that kind of sucks. It's like right in the middle of a national park and like people can't go near it. That would be impossible in today's age because uh, have you ever been hiking like in Red Rock Canyon or, you know, uh, the Valley of Fire? People always go off the off the tracks and off the trails. So I feel like that would be very difficult to contain this SCP. But all right, guys, I'm going to end that episode there. Be sure to like and subscribe the Vulgans channel and video. Um... Uh, and be sure to like and subscribe my video as well. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.